Welcome back to Mystical Ninja, starring Goemon. This is the Impatient Geek. Let's head inside Ghost Toys Castle. Now, as you can see, the ghosts are pretty pathetic. That's because it's a child's game and they're not allowed to be scary. However, this does not mean they aren't dangerous. These ghosts are invincible in their current state. This door will not open until you light the torches. You have to light them with the metal of flames. So if you didn't get it by now, I feel sorry for you. In this room there is a crane game, with a camera for a prize. But you are not able to get it at the moment because the power is not on. Well that just blows. So let's move on. Here's a room with a bunch of seemingly deadly spikes, but you can just easily jump over them, as I've demonstrated. There's a silver fortune doll on top of that big head in the background. That is what I am going for right now. Now this room, this room has a sort of junction feature. You could either take the hard way and pick up Mr. Elephant, or you could take this way and take the easy way. Just skip all the way to the end of the room. Now I didn't realize it would go back, so I just jumped off like an idiot. So my dumbass has to swim. And here I'm thinking, oh, I can just wait for it. It's like a bus stop. Nope, it's not coming back. That platform is a high-speed delivery with no exception for morons. Obviously, I'm being a moron today because I just jumped into the fucking water. <sighs> but I'm going to do this the right way and take the hard path. Which is kind of an overstatement because it's not really hard at all. You can skip half of it anyway by just sw swimming onto that ramp for through the water. Like so. Because I jumped in the water again. I'm stating the obvious today. Alright, now this room's pretty interesting, but it's not the enemies here that make it interesting. There's something completely different about it, but I'll get to that in a minute after I kill them all. Killing them all reveals that silver key. That's not the interesting thing I was talking about. I mean, that's pretty typical. Kill all the enemies, get something for your troubles. This is what makes it interesting. See up here, there seems to be this soft patch of soil in the middle of that blue hexagon. Well, you want to pick up this root, th this plant, giant plant seed, Carry it up. Throw it in there. And I hope you're good at jumping or running around because you will have to do a lot of that if you want to collect all this glorious money. And this plant does respawn. So you can come back into this room as many times as you need to just refill on health and money. But I'm not going to do that. I'm already set for life. Alright, now, if you'll notice, across that tightrope, there was a golden fortune doll. Those are extremely rare, and they act as heart containers. This one is probably one of the easiest in the game to get. Nab it. And like I said, heart container. Automatically strength gauge increased by one. We've filled up half our strength gauge, so we're pretty damn healthy. Can't go through there, don't have a key. So, just gotta keep on trucking this way.
There's a cage down there that I try to freaking show. I tried to get a clear view of it for you guys for for like I don't know how long I waste here, but God, it's annoying, and the camera won't turn, so it's pissing me off. So then I decide, okay, I'll just jump in the water, and it's right there. There's a silver fortune doll down there. Unfortunately, none of us can dive. That's right, we're ninjas, we can survive off an infinite fall off a flying dragon, but we can't dive underwater. Pretty pathetic. I don't understand why there's all this calligraphy everywhere either, but whatever. These pots contain two dumplings apiece if you need them. I don't. But now, we're finally back to this room. Turning on the power just takes one of our regular ninjas, but you can never turn it back off. No matter how many times you jump on that X button. Guess you need somebody heavier than a Bisumaru, or you're just gonna rack up their electricity bill. Fine by me, I don't give a shit. Works like any other random crane game, except it's a lot more fair. The cr them crane hands aren't flimsy, but I missed this time. Don't worry. I don't waste too much time here. I'll get it next time. Probably should have sped this up, but... God, it's slow. Anybody who missed that camera a lot probably just freaked out when... God, hurry up! Any more than one screw up and I probably would have sped it up. But, I didn't screw it up this time. We nab it. Though I don't know why you pick it up by the lens. That would destroy the purpose of the camera, but it's not used for taking pictures anyway. So, who the hell cares? It's used for its flash. Which I'll demonstrate as soon as I get it. One more thing to mention. No matter who you touch that with, Ibisumaru always gets it. Every item is given to a set character. That's just the way it is. And I really hate those camera changes. That's one of the cons of this game. The constant camera changes. Oh, and I, cu I cut out all that extra running back just for you guys. Now, move on. So let's show off the camera. You gotta wait until the sparkles start f circling around you before you flash. The flash makes the ghosts solid, but it also makes them very angry and they come after you. I'm also trying to show off that you can use your weapons when you are lying on the ground. This is the same for any character. It's a little bit different with Sasuke once we get him, but we'll figure that out later. Anyway, but after killing them, you can head through this lantern-like thing and continue on in the game. Now you see that red water between the platforms? That will hurt you. It won't kill you, but it'll hurt you. This isn't Koimon's great adventure, after all. For those of you who don't know, that's the sequel to this game on the N64. Don't know when it was released, because I never got it as a kid. Hell, I don't even remember when this game was released. I'm not a history buff. Now, if you haven't noticed, the music changes as you progress through the level. It's picked up a bit since we last heard it. Got a few more instruments. See, it hurts you. Makes you flash. Now, this is the transport up to the second floor, but as you can see, I have some trouble controlling a Bisumaru. Sucking hard at him, so I decided to go for Ye because Ye has range. And if you also haven't noticed, I like to collect everything that the enemies drop just because. I'm obsessive about collecting it. It was like, it's a habit I got from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Just collect everything. Collect everything you can, it'll make your life easier later. Now here's where we get to uh, one of the more annoying platforming segment segments here. Now, 
thought I'd be able I think you can make it across all four. But that takes some real precision. That takes jumping really early off that first one. And then you just have to blitz it and hope you make it. I think I've been able to do it a couple times. But I don't show that off here. Now we got another silver key in tow. We're good to move on. I just decided to blitz through the water because I didn't want to platform again. So I took like three hearts of damage. No big. Game won't kill me. And even if it does, I've got the rice ball. <coughs> this room is just an asshole room. It is full of tricks and shit that'll just screw you over. And it's also full of the... I guess it's supposed to, It's red because it's supposed to be hot or some kind of demon water or something like that. There's some super dumplings over there that I could have used if I hadn't totally gained my heart container and refilled all my hearts. Now in this room, it's basically the same story. Make the ghost visible, kill all the enemies. Now when you're using the camera, you want to make sure that the sparkles are surrounding you and the camera icon has stopped flashing, because that's when you'll be able to actually use the flash, when you'll be done charging. And that was a Japanese lantern right there, that I was jumping up and down in front of, but it's made of metal so it can't rip through it like most Japanese lanterns. And the bottom just disappears into the floor whenever you beat it, so... No big. Now I hesitated in jumping over onto this platform, so now I gotta take the hard way around. Over there is the gold key door. I don't have no I don't have any gold key so I can't get in there. Now I decided to switch to Goemon because I'm most used to Goemon's attacking style and control, so because I play as him most of the time. But I'm trying to show off all the characters. I don't know why anybody would have this ridiculous rotating platform. Alright, it's the Peach Mountain Shoguns. Who gives a fuck? This is Konami. Plot? What's plot? But it does take a game that has very little plot and actually make it feel pretty epic. And here's a room full of jump ropes. For no particular reason. Here's a particularly interesting room. Mostly just because it has the only pot in the game that spews out four dumplings that I know of. Let's hope 13 isn't my unlucky number. My Rio count might cause me doom. Now, you're not supposed to jump off that first platform like I did, because otherwise you'll fall through the floor into god knows what. You should also make sure to use the camera correctly the first time. See, they all came after me. What a bunch of jerks. Anyway, there's hidden holes in the floor that are revealed when you take a picture of them. That contain the deadly water. Or and ghost ectoplasm or something. I'm not sure what it is. If anybody's got any ideas, go ahead, comment. Finally, with the gold key in tow, we can get through this door. 
and make our way to the last bit of the dungeon. Now, the music actually gets pretty damn funky. It, act it really picks up after, once you get to this last section of the dungeon. Because we're in the last section. You know we're in the last section because we're playing this deadly game of pool. Or billiards, as some of you may call it. I call it pool. Now, you, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You just gotta hit these balls in order. You don't have to aim towards the corner or anything. You just gotta hit them. And avoid all the other balls. Because as soon as you start taking balls out of the picture, all the other balls will start freaking out and moving a lot faster. So you gotta watch out for your health. I probably should have used the chain pipe here. I did. That six was an easy hit. I should have gotten that. But yeah, they do hurt. I got lucky with that last shot there. Grab the last silver key in the dungeon and head up into this room where they where will they have a key that's specific to the second, fourth, and final dungeons. Not specific, but very close to it. By the way, super dumplings, yeah, they're invaluable at times like these. The game's just too nice. I still go by what I said before. This is an easy ass game. Diamond key. Only find that in the second, fourth, and final dungeons. There's only about five dungeons in this game. Dungeons slash castles. Now, I don't feel like playing Death Pool again, so we're just gonna head on and unlock that final door. As a bit tomorrow, cuz. This is his boss. You'll know why in a sec. As soon as you unlock the diamond lock, you'll end up in this room. And here I'm just trying to show off the map. Notice the skull is on the third floor, right above where we are. And B1 is that water room where there was the cage I was trying to show you that had the silver fortune all in it. We'll be back there later. When we can dive. For now, we're going to take care of this boss. That's a dead giveaway to the boss fight strategy completely. I mean, most of the time in like Legend of Zelda and stuff, you got to figure this stuff out. But here, they're like, nah, just take it. You made it through here. Go on. See his heart? You gotta chip away at it like you're chipping away at a croissant. Pieces, li literally, pieces of it flake off as you hit it. He'll shift in and out of uh, two different states. When he's in attack mode, you can't hurt him. But when he's in post-attack mode, you can just smash his heart. See? Look, uh, look at those little flakes of his heart coming out. It's kind of gross. I'd have to say, all his claw attacks are really easy to dodge. The only difficult one to dodge is that fireball explosion one. Especially if you're running the wrong way. But, this is a pretty easy boss fight. Just so long as you keep your distance, but not too much distance.
that, he's toast. Nothing much more to it than that. It's one of the most repetitive boss fights I know. And we pick up the miracle flower in the shape of a flower. And meet the I don't know, cherry flavored version of Boron. And our head antagonist. <laughs> now there's something wrong with the shoulder pads there. They're supposed to have a design very similar to the bottom half of his outfit. But for some reason, my cartridge isn't acting up or my system's really old and it's just farting out. But it's one of the things of the holograms. You saw it in the opening cutscene. I actually think his outfit is really damn cool. Though I'd never be caught wearing it out in public. Not a damn chance. You know, the audience is really starting to get to me. Oh yeah, really starting to get to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, one of the damn that's one of the damn funniest things about this game bot this this game's antagonist. It's just it's wacky and I love every minute of it. Except every audio track. I, I just want to kill the stage. I just want to kill the audience. Oh, that was just dumb. Oh, gee, thanks for giving us directions. Look, even the game's making fun of itself. I was thinking of voice acting him, but not totally sure. By the way, I decided to cut out the dragon parts so you don't have to watch them. Nobody really gave any uh, option on what they wanted me to do, but yeah. As you can see, we're back in the Folky Poke Village, and the music's quite upbeat now. Now I'm back here mainly for two reasons. One. There's a hidden silver fortune doll around here. Two, somebody owes me a fucking reward. So we're gonna get him. There's no more silver fortune dolls hidden in these haystacks anywhere. So here I am trying to find my way, but I could have found my way to that guy who offers who offered the reward at the at that door at the bottom of the stairs, or I took the long way around and I could just go down these stairs to that bottom floor. Let's talk to some of the kids, find out what the hell happened. Alright, well I'm not sure about that guy who is going to give us the reward, so let's have Ye charm him a little. Yeah, I want some money. What the? That fucker got his just desserts. Anyway, we're back in Zazen Town because this is where you gotta go back to heading to the Chigoku region. I'm gonna talk to this kid for a bit first, though. Yeah. Apparently, we've got some fucking kid genius here who, who locked that door before. Well, now that he's back, it works, and we can move on to the Chigoku region, which we were currently blocked off of. However, I'm going to stop it right here. So, this has been the Impatient Geek. Next time on Let's Play, Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. We head into the Jugoku region and take care of all the crap we have to do before the next castle. Later!